This is my client, Marla, who is very athletic, very fit, has excellent range of motion throughout her lower extremities. Uh, that includes feet and ankle, knees and hips. And when she walks, there's no clue regarding the hypomobility that we find in the pelvis when we perform spring tests. She was hit by a truck which caused her to spin around and fall onto her bum and ended up having a laminectomy at L45S1 and uh, she has some leg symptoms that come and go and she found me on the web and came to see me today and I'll show you just very quickly how free her hip mobility is so with the scour test you can see that hip moves very well when we come to the pelvis and I try to shift her pelvis from the right to the left I'm using about 30 pounds of force and there's no give at all when I try and rotate posteriorly which usually will move with 15 pounds of force and I'm now putting 30 or more there's no give. Can, I, can you line your stomach please? The sacrotuberous ligaments on each side feel rock hard and that ligament is supposed to have some give. When I try and spring superiorly there's no give. When I try and spring inferiorly I'm using 20 to 30 pounds there's no give and um, when I try and rotate ilium forward there's no give. When I try to bring the sacrum, there's no give. The, there's an absence of a sulcus coming off the PSIS onto the sacrum. I actually climb onto the sacrum because the sacrum is wedged posteriorly. Because the sacrum articulates with L5, L5 is also hypomobile. So this is S1 and this is L5 and with a reasonable amount of force, probably 15 pounds at most, somewhere between 10 and 15. There's no give there. If I come up to L4, I can load it, I can spring it, it moves, and it recoils. So we're going to stop filming here. I'll just add that in response to this pattern, she has a compensatory rigidity up in the thoracic spine at T3 and 4, including the third or fourth rib. Um, upper cervical spine usually responds with um, a hyperextension pattern and I've seen it in almost everybody who presents with this pattern but she has a very free very mobile upper cervical spine so that's an interesting note but this is a pattern that we see in people who have had a fall and it's also a pattern from people who have delivered very large babies and it's very easy to treat it's not in the body of literature um, it is in my book, and when I teach workshops, we present on this as well. Treatment is very direct. What I do is I place foam under the ilium on both sides. And I want the ilia to glide posteromedially. So we apply 2 by 4 by 8 inch foam vertically under each ilium. And we do this for five minutes when we're trying to create a posteromedial, posterior and medial glide of each ilium and allowing the sacrum to just settle in. We'll do this for five minutes. After that, I'll put a, a soft piece of foam over the sacrum and I will just gently push on the sacrum and I will push with 15 pounds or less. And I have lots of practice using a force transducer and using bathroom scales. And that is the treatment. Um, so I'm not going to film for the next 10 minutes, but I'll film the response to it. And um, again, the treatment is very straightforward. And I just uh, would like to spread the word about this pattern of dysfunction. Um, when I come to treating the sacrum, I use a piece of foam. It's not absolutely necessary, but it gives a little bit. And, and I feel like that adds some comfort. And that's what that face looks like. So I'll stop filming now and then we will recheck the results.